Welcome back to the channel. Just hope that you're doing fine wherever you are today. It was a fly in a wall in a conversation to be we were having about black people and coolie people. And the question I'm asking, where does the line of personal preference stop and racism begin? Or is the line a blurred line? So this guy was telling a girl that he has many afro guyanese friends. Actually, his best friend is afro guyanese but he could never see himself marrying an afro guyanese girl because he prefers not to marry that race. And he was asked why, and he was saying, well, here, texture, um, cultural backgrounds, and so on and so forth. He rather marry in his own race, which is Indo-Guyanese. And it, and it struck me, it, it really struck me because in part of me saying this guy is, is being a little racist, and then part of me is saying we're entitled to personal preference. So, I'm there, you know, I like mind people business. And the other person is probing a little bit more and saying, so where does this all come from? And he says, well, I was brought up in a traditional Indian home and I like my traditions. I like my background. I like my heritage. And I want my kids to be um, Indo-Guyanese descent. And I want them to carry on those traditions as Indians. And so is that now going beyond personal preference to cultural preference or um heritage preference and is it borderline racist um because again this guy in my opinion i've been around him a lot and and he interacts with all races and treats everyone fairly with interactions i had i want y'all to tell me in the comments where does personal preference cultural preference and racism where is the boundaries where is the line how can we define these things or is it hard to define y'all let me know in the comments over and out hello guys welcome back to the channel just hope that you're doing fine wherever you are today this is eugene took stories and today's concern is taking us back to the caribbean uh specifically to the guyana community because um there has been a racial tension between um indo-guyanas and afro-guyanas those are primary ethnic groups which are in the guyana so during the british colonial rule enslaved africans were brought to guyana to work on sugar plantations after slavery was abolished indentured laborers indentured laborers from indians were brought into to replace um, the african workforce uh, this created racial tension economic divide between afro guyanese who are historically disfranchised and the indo guyanese who are later encouraged to settle on the land and enter the business so this has always caused uh, the racial tension between the two primarily groups so join me today as you are going to discuss uh, racism in the guyana community and also see how uh, does it affect the political and economic of uh, discrimination of both group because we've had um indo guyanese complaining about um afro guyanas afro guyanas are also complaining about indo guyanese so we are yet to see what's the really problem happening between the two groups and i know that um guyana itself uh as a country in the caribbean has always uh been facing um this problem because we've been seeing um political tension between uh, the, 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 the two groups, the two primary groups, you know, um, having uh, this discussion. So I think that having this, uh, this discussion as, as people, because I know and I believe that people in the Guyana country, they love their country. And as a person who is always advocating for uh, people to settle in peace and harmony, especially people of color because indians also consider themselves as people of colors uh they were the endangered laborers you know and the <clears throat> africans who went to work in the plantations so what are we trying to see here happening in the guyana there is uh racism which is going on in the guyana community and people are coming out to talk about this especially indo guyanas and afro guyanas and i think that this is important because we need to get out and really got get to uh, talk about this because it is important for us to have these uncomfortable discussions. Call out people for what they're doing. Um, describe the scenarios that people dis uh, received um, racism. And it is important for us to, you know, talk about this. So this is your presenter, Eugene Doc Stories. And I'll be taking you through uh, this video as a presenter. I hope that we get to learn because these, uh, pe these are people's experience. People are sharing the experience how they received um, racism and generally it's not even about the people's experience it's about what's happening um in the country like in general so 
I hope that people from the black community will also get to see how people from other black communities are faring in different countries. And today is not other than any other country than uh, Guyana as our focus today. So let's dive right into the video. I'll come back and offer my commentary at the end of the video. I believe that we are going to learn, we are going to see, and we are going to um, see how people express how they, feel, how they feel about some issues which are happening, especially racial issues which are happening in the Guyana. Until then, let's dive right into the video. PPP, listen I'm up. here to listen, but what I heard is very disturbing extremely disturbing and so my comments i stand and and reaffirm the comments of my brother congress member jeffries the united states will not tolerate racism in guyana or any other country and i also want the officials to know that if any harm comes to rickford burke let me say that again if any harm comes to Rickford Burke or anyone on this dais or anyone in this room, there'll have to be answers. We will immediately demand answers. And I can tell you uh, that someone will be held accountable for those actions. And for those who are in Guyana and for those officials who don't know me, um, my name is Letitia James, and <laughs> and uh, uh, whether you're in the White House or the State House means nothing to me. I fear no one other than my God. And courage is a requirement of this position. Every elected official um, requires courage and requires having a steel in your backbone. And so I believe in democratic institutions and I believe that Guyana needs strong democratic institutions and I will defend that. And I will abhor any discrimination or racism of any people, particularly people from the African diaspora. We have also in this country, we have attempted to root out corruption. We've attempted to address issues of poverty and, we, and we're not perfect in this country. We still know that there are individuals who unfortunately live in poverty and we call them out. You see, we believe in the First Amendment in our Constitution, the right to free speech, the right to journal, journalism, Journalists should have free and fair the ability to report whatever they seek without any interruption. We believe that discrimination should be called out. We believe that racism should be called out. We don't, we try to call out class struggles as well. And so all that I have to say is the following is that I, again, will, along with my Democratic Attorney Generals across the country, We'll be calling upon DOJ, Department of Justice, as well as the Biden administration and to look into the allegations that have been put forth this evening. Tell me how come here in Guyana so many people are still racist? Tell me how come the accident rate is going up on a daily basis? Tell me how come people are suffer out the street? No food, no home, no place to stay. Tell me how come we start to ignore the issues we face? Cause life is so unfair. In this sweet paradise, this is what we swear. Oh, so many one people, can you see, you see that anywhere? Everyone treated equal, and this is why so many die, leaving so many to cry. Tell me how come. Now, people from Trinidad and Guyana, you're not excluded from this smoke. You know damn well that the Trini Indians and the Guyanese Indians, or coolies, are racist or colorist. They always telling their daughter, oh, bring home an Indian boy and be vexed if they ever bring home a black man or a man with more Afrocentric features. I have a good Trinidadian friend who always say, he's like a shade lighter than me. He, he will always say, I thank God I'm not darker than, than, than any darker than how I am. 
Watch your mouth, boy. And I know it's not your fault. It's your parents' fault. And if that should come from slavery, but watch your mouth, boy. We love Trini. We love Guyana. But all of this dividing between black and Indian or native or ab aboriginal, how you say, it, has got to stop. No one man or one woman is better than anybody just because they're colored, their skin, and their, how straight them hair is. Idiot. Hi guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the last video that I had made regarding racism and prejudice against Indian people. As I'm going through the comments, I can see that it has Indian people going up against black people, black people going up against Indian people, whether it's Africans versus Indians or African Americans versus India. L let me just stop you day. I'm going to remind you, we are both people of color. We are both equals. There's no reason for comments like black people trying to be like Indian people or Indian people trying to be like black people. That's not making sense. Indian people and black people were both discriminated against, put into slavery, degraded, and so on and so forth. For us to be fighting with each other like this, it simply don't make sense because we are literally brother and sister. The whole purpose of my original video was to bring awareness on casual racism and prejudices against Indian people. But then as I was going through the comments, something else hit me. A lot of people are not even familiar with the history behind Indians. No one really speaks up about the struggles our ancestors faced. When the British was roaming free in Trinidad, running things. When it was roaming free in India, running things. And so on and so forth. Google is free. Feel free to go ahead, look up the history. Go ahead and share with the world. Do as you please. But I'm going to remind you to just love one another because we are both equals we are both brother and sister sister and brother at the end of the day a lot of you know my page is always good vibes only i promote good vibes entertainment things like that occasionally the water does get hot but that's okay because these are the conversations that we need to have i love you guys stay blessed Mwah. Now, I didn't want to respond to this comment because responding to it meant that I would have to deal with the psychology behind why this person would even ask in the first place. And I can't properly address the psychology behind it unless I know where you're actually coming from. For example, it could be genuine curiosity. Or, this person could be a racist who clearly would have a problem with me dating out of my race and thus is trying to ascertain which is true. Or maybe this person too is dating out of their race and is trying to find common ground with me so that they can ask for advice. And because I have no idea of knowing what direction this question is coming from, I'll address it from my point of view. No, my boyfriend is not Indian. And you know, for a very long time, I was completely ignorant of the fact that there are lots of people, especially in Guyana, who have a problem with interracial couples. You see, I met my boyfriend when I was 13 years old. We fell in love and started dating at a very early age. And to me, he was just a human being. He was just a guy. He was just a person with a soul and a heart for me to love. I didn't see his skin color or his hair texture because my parents never taught me to look for skin color or hair texture. My parents raised us around all sorts of people. They were always educated and forward-thinking people. I was raised around black people, Amerindian people, Portuguese people, Indian people, and I never once saw the differences in physical appearance amongst those people. They were all just people. Everybody was an auntie and an uncle. Everybody was friend. I never saw a black person is different from an Indian person. Some of my parents' best friends are non-Indians. So imagine my surprise when I got older and I realized that people had a problem with my relationship. When I realized that people were so hateful and angry just because you love someone who didn't look like you. And I feel so blessed that I get to walk around and not have that burden on my shoulders that I don't care because I get to meet people and look beyond their skin and see their soul. I get to appreciate them for who they are, and I get to meet the true person that lies within, and not judge them based on an appearance. I love my partner, not because he's a non-Indian, but because he's an amazing soul, a blessing to this world, someone that fills me up and makes my cup run over. And I can't wait to marry him, have children, and raise them 
to think just like us because the world needs more people that think this way. I was contemplating going to sit in a burial ground and to do a live from there and to remind everybody that at the end of the day, that's our final destination. That is our final destination. You want to fight, you want to break up, you can have everything. That's our final destination. My job is a very complex job. But the end of it is what I want and what I'm going to sacrifice everything for. I've asked every member of the government, and that is a Guyana that is unified, a Guyana that delivers prosperity for all its citizens, a Guyana in which we respect each other, a Guyana in which we can have fierce debates, fierce conversation, but grounded in respect. You know, there are a lot of instances that have made uh, Guyana people to report issues of racism, um, especially in the political and uh, in the political and economical sector. Talking about politic, uh, political and economic discrimination. Um, you know, in the contemporary Guyana, Afro Guyanese people have reported um, systemic discrimination in both political and economic spheres. The political landscape um, is often divided along ethnic lines, and this is always the problem. Any political, um, you know, any political and economic landscape is always divided in an ethnic sphere. Like it is always a given group that has a given party. Another ethnic group belongs to a given party and, a party and this is a problem. So it is racism which is mixed with a lot of things, right? So um, the political landscape is often divided along ethnic lines with People's Progressive Party, that's the PPP, uh, being largely supported by indo and the People's National Congress, that the PNC, historically representing the afro guyanese interest. This division has led to allegations of political favoritism and marginalization between on ethnicity, particularly when one group, particularly when one group uh, dominates the other group. And this is true. And I'm, I'm even trying to look back as um, as a as a country where I come from. Uh, ma majority of political lines are always divided into different ethnic groups. That's why it is easy to fight things like corruption. It is easy to fight things that are majorly not making people to uh, move along or making people to work together. And so, my advocacy is for. Um, indo guyanese and afro guyanese to always work together to ensure the continuity of the country or to ensure that um, everything is going just fine because when we have fights again amongst ourselves there are things that we are losing like for example uh, people are not going to economically thrive in these places because what i'm buying or what you're selling i'll sell it to a person who looks like me you'll sell it to a person who looks like you so if we have uh, the pace or we, we remove about the discrimination that we have in both political and economic spheres, we can find a way of um, just growing. We can find a way of just being one people. So I'm also calling out racism, especially racism against black people, which is happening in uh, Guyana. And I know, um, and I'm not just pointing out, I'm not pointing hands to Indians, but this is something which has been happening. And I know Indians are really notorious when it comes to discriminating people, uh, the issue of colorism because of the effect of the caste system that they have always been having. So I'm not just calling out the Indians or the indo guyanese but I'm also calling out black people who are also um, perpetuating the discrimination along political and economic lines. Um, talking about economic disparities, which are also significant, uh, with many afro guyanese facing limited access to resources and opportunities compared to their counterparts, indo guyanese right? So these foster feelings of exclusion and resentment. There is uh, a little bit of uh, economic disparities between um, indo guyanese and afro guyanese So indo guyanese are like having more opportunities than um, the afro guyanese and certain kind of things we're talking about economic discrimination they spar um they spar or well, they spar a problem you know they spar a problem because people get to see this as 
as a problem to them, right? So when they see this as a problem, they will feel like they are being discriminated not to uh, do some things. And this creates resentments amongst these groups. This creates tension among these, uh, these groups. And I'm also going to like to talk about um, other spheres that we are seeing um, resentments, especially in um, social and cultural tension in uh, you know these communities. So socially, afro guyanese individuals often experience racism in various forms, and it's true, including discrimination in the workplace, biased laws, uh, biased laws, biased laws enforcement uh, practices, and derogatory stereotypes, cultural tensions uh, between afro guyanese and indo guyanese communities sometimes erupt into violence, especially during times of political instability. These are among some things which uh, usually happens within uh, the Guyana as a country. And and I will always say this, one thing that we can do to find the solution of the problems that we have is one, is getting to know where the problem really started. So we're getting to see where the, where really um, the rain started beating us and we can see how to, uh, you know, help this. We can see how to like change things. We can see how things really work, right? So <clears throat> we've been having recent developments that I would like also to um, highlight in this presentation. So I'm not advocating for racism in any part of the world. That's how you'll see in some of my videos. I go to the ground in what happens in these places. I've talked about racism in the Indian community. I've talked about racism in the Latino community. I've talked about racism in the United States, which is uh, the majorly I focus on that. Um, also now getting talk about racism in the, in the Caribbean. And I've seen um, a lot of racism videos which are happening in the Caribbean, right? So this is something which has been happening just for the advocacy for my black family across the world. Black people are, are dispersed in every part of the world. Trust me, there is no country that you will set your foot and go and fail to see a black person. So this is something which really happens. Um, I'm also going to talk about uh, recent uh, developments, you know, recent political events such as the controversial 2020 elections that exacerbates racial tensions. The PBP's victory which is seen by some as win for the indo guyanese has led to accusation of electoral fraud um, and further deepened the racial divide. afro guyanese people have reported an increase in racially motivated attacks and discrimination since the elections. So um, this is something which usually happens, you know, and um, people are calling for equitable governance, uh, efforts to address systemic racism in, Guy in Guyana. However, we also understand that the process has also been slow. Um, it is it, it hasn't been moving so fast. So generally, I would like to say that racism against black people in Guyana is intertwined, and with with the country's complex history of colonialism, ethnic competition, and political power struggles, the situation um, remains tense, and finding path towards genuine racial reconciliation is crucial for future stability and for the nation. So um, this is important that things that we like to talk about and really see and really show the world and really um, advocate for coexistence between afro guyanese and indo guyanese And I understand we have some other ethnic groups in the Guyana, but primarily my focus was in the Indo and Afro. So I hope that you find these videos helpful, you find these videos thought-provoking, and I would like to um, hear your two cents in regards to this. This is my two cents in regards to those videos that I compiled to you so that you can see. I hope that you get to learn because I believe that every day is always a learning day. And here you're presenting your Jindoki stories. I'm here and I'll be representing you and I'll be showing you more and more educating videos and see what black people are doing across the continent. So as you all know, this is your presenter of Jindoki stories. If you're watching this video for the first time, I'll ask you to subscribe to the channel, join my membership and really get to see what I can offer you. Until then, peace, love and harmony. Salute.